perfect. All right, so here we go. We got a 2020 Ford F-150 here. You see, we got to put a couple of door skins on it. Got her tore down. We're going to blend the fender. We're going to blend back on the cab. I don't know what the plan is on the cab corner. I'd say we're blending it. If not, we should be. I'm going to have to write a supplement for that, I do believe. Anyhow, we're going to put front and rear door skins on this thing. See, I've already got them all tore down and ready to go. So uh, I'm going to pop this thing off. I want to show you something about these trucks that I've noticed. Or not that I've noticed, but that I do. So the way these doors attach, they've got a 13 millimeter bolt right here. I say 13 millimeter. That's what the head is. And then they've got another one down here. Now those, you take those loose, you can adjust, adjust the door in and out, up and down. Well, if you see this guy right here, that's a little 10 millimeter bolt. And then you got another one right up here in the top. So if you pop this one out, and then you pop this guy out. You don't have to, you don't lose any of your adjustment in the door. You can just pick the door right up off of it. It's got like a little stud that sticks down in it from the top. And then on the bottom, it's got a little one that sticks up from the bottom. So you just pick the door straight up and take it over and put it on a stand. Now, I like to just take it loose with the 10 millimeter. That way I keep all my factory adjustments and everything because the hope is that I can uh, get my door skin put on and not have to do a whole lot of adjustments. So I can just sit it back on there. I and mean, then if I do a little bit of adjustment, maybe it's just fine tuning, uh, but not a whole lot there, hopefully. So I'm going to pop this dude off and get her on a stand, and then we'll talk about our next step. All right, so here we are. Got it popped off of there right quick. So now you can see what I was talking about here. We got this little uh, nipple that extends down into the top, and then you've got a, kind of like a little receiver there, a nice bevel that way the thing slides in. You can lift it off real easy. That's the easiest way that I've found to get it off. Now we will be taking these off, but just not right now. So uh, you see the door's pretty much gutted. I got the glass out of it. I've got the speaker off of it, things like that. It just makes it lighter, easier to handle. So we're gonna get our door check out of it. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna push the wires, just push them like this back inside our door. You know, um, for, I'm gonna leave them out just for right now so I can cut the skin off. But then we come back after that once I get ready to hammer it, I'm going to push this the rest of the way in because I don't want it kind of hanging in the way. Kind of got ahead of myself there. Um, so this, I will take off this nut from the factory. It's not It's not painted. It's not supposed to be painted. I don't remember why. They send paperwork why. I don't remember what the reason is. I don't really know the reason. I know it ain't supposed to get painted, so I take it off. Uh, we got to get our weather strip off of here. So got to get around pop this dude off. This isn't so bad. I use a little clip tool. Get in here, pop the little detents. Now at the top, it is two-sided tape as well. But what you can do though, is as you get this little clip to release, if you pull this way, if you pull it where it would like pull the, the whole thing tight, it pulls that tape tight. So you can pull this way and kind of pull up at the same time. It'll get that tape to release without ripping it off of there. So you don't have to retape it. It'll actually just come undone. You can stick it right back down. It saves a lot of time going back together. So. I'm going to get to work getting this weather strip off and uh, getting that door check off and then we'll be ready to cut a skin off. All right, so it doesn't really matter where you start. There's no two-sided tape right here. So what it is, I just take this little tool with a little fine edge like that. I go in here. It has a little detent right here. You kind of catch it with the edge and you get under it and kind of roll it out. That way you don't break the clip there. Some of them do break. There's not really anything you can do about it. They're actually, they're really brittle, but you just kind of keep working your way around them here. I won't make you watch me do the whole thing here, but kind of wanted you to see my approach to this. That way you understand when you get ready to do it. Now on this top corner right here, you've got another one that you kind of get up under here um, with this tool. It'll pop right up. It's no big deal. It's kind of made into this rubber. So be careful because you can't replace you can't replace this little detent right here it's because it's made into the weather strip itself so but it, it comes out pretty easy i don't know if i've ever broken one so it's not really a big deal so you see the corner right here all this comes up it's not two-sided tape so the, you're going to start running the two-sided tape area right here on this clip on this top one right here so the tape runs all the way along here so this is where i'm going to start pulling pulling it out and up out and up so you see how that tape Hope you can see that the tape is not damaged, so you can get it off of there without damaging the two-sided tape. It makes life so much nicer when you get ready to put it back together. Just take, give it a little pull. 
just let it come loose. Don't just try to rip it off real fast. You just want to just kind of let it, let it come loose and pull on up. It'll come up real nice. That way, like I said, you don't have to sit there and try to either sit down and because you can't clean it with like a stripe wheel, you know, or anything like that. You can do it with a razor blade, but who in the hell wants to sit there with a razor blade for a month of Sundays trying to get that stupid thing off? Let's see, it broke that one. And here's another good thing: if you do break them, they only broke one side of the detent, so that clip will still go back in there and work just fine because still got half of it, and you got the two sided tape, so. You know you can't get away with that now if you do just totally break the clip you know um if, if you're in a pinch the two-sided tape will still hold it down as long as you like the clip on either side of it they're still good you know um you can get away with that but i work in a shop so we've got them in a in a drawer over here we keep a bunch of them so if i break one i'll just go ahead and, and just replace it but um that's only if i break the whole clip off if i just break one of them usually i probably just keep it pushing and um just go ahead and Stick it back together and let the two sided tape hold it down. Doesn't, you know, it's not going to give you any problems. That two sided tape alone is more than plenty to hold that thing down. But there you go. So you can see how long that actually took to do and get off without damaging it. Now, I'd like to take a little, a little uh, needle nose pliers, something like this right here. I can kind of fish them back inside the little hole right there. That way I don't lose them. Just bang, just like that. There we go. So now with that, I just go ahead and work my way around the whole rest of the door here. Pop this thing the rest of the way off. You are going to want to go ahead and pull your latch bolts out before you send it to paint. Because if you don't, most painters will paint them. If they even paint past the... Um, um, a lot of them will take and just put a tape line right underneath where the... Uh, kind of split right where the, the holes are for the clips and just paint the outer half of the door if they're really lazy, which most painters are. Um, so if you have a painter that's like that, don't worry about your your uh, your latch bolts. But if your painter is one that does go ahead and cut it in correctly and cuts in the whole door, make sure you pop those latch bolts out because nothing screams, hey, I've been worked on and it's hack work more than painted bolts and a latch. So I'm going to finish getting this off, get a check out, and uh, we'll get ready to cut this thing off. All right, so you see we got our door flipped over now. Uh, we're gonna cut the edge all the way around with a uh, with a grinder, but prior to doing that, these forts are put together with something called an L SPR, a self-piercing rivet. Um, it's these little guys right here. Kind of looks like almost like a tiny bolt head, but they're nice and flush. Now there's a lot of ways that you can cut them off. The way that I normally like to cut them off is uh, with a belt sander. Uh, it's a little, it's like a three quarter inch wide belt that runs on a grinder. Mine seems to be eluding me at the moment, so uh, much to my behest, I'm going to basically use a cutoff wheel with this extra wide wheel on it. It will work just fine. You just want to make sure that you stay on the head of the rivet itself so you don't cut too deep and uh, cut into your, your main um, shell. Uh, you can cut through the door skin. That's the goal, but you don't want to cut too deep into your shell because that's that's bad. You're taking away strength if you do that. So I'm going to show you how I go about grinding one of these off with this grinder on this door. We'll do another one down the road. I'll show you how to do it with the belt sander. Same type of process, just different tool. So let me get some air on this dude, and uh, we'll go ahead and I'll show you how we how we cut these off, get them cleared. All right, so now coming down on it, so you can see, you see that area around it, all of this right here. That's the edge of the door skin. So you can see we cut, we kind of cut all the way through the rivet. We cut through the door skin itself. So now the skin is free from the door shell itself. Now basically, you're going to need to do that on every one of these. They're just on this vertical section on the rear door. That's the only place you got to worry about those rivets. The rest of it, it's crimped all the way around. So. I'm going to go on and grind all these off, and then we'll come back, and I'll show you how we're going to handle the crimped edge. All right, so let me show you this. So I did go ahead and get the rest of our spot, or, uh, SPRs all ground off. This is one of the reasons why I don't like using a cutoff wheel for this, because I don't know if you can see on the wheel there, there's tons of little melted chunks of aluminum. So when you grind steel, 
the steel just throws sparks and goes everywhere, as we all know, makes a big fat mess. Well, when you grind aluminum, it throws, it makes dust and it goes everywhere, it makes a big mess as well. But it will also melt and stick to your your cutoff wheel like that, which makes it cut less efficiently. And I don't know, it's annoying. I don't like the sparks and stuff anyway. That's why I prefer to use the belt sander. Um, you'll see me use the belt sander on other stuff in the future. Uh, I finally found it, but see right now, it's already got all this cut out. So now we're going to get to uh, cutting off uh, where our crimp is right here. Let me show you what I like to use for that. So now I have seen many different tools used for this part of the process. I've seen guys use cut off wheels with that wide wheel on it like that and go around and cut it. I've seen guys use a two inch disc on an angle grinder. I've seen guys use air buffers and, and they all work just fine. So that, that really at the end of the day is just whatever floats your boat, whatever you like the best. Now what I like is um, this is just a big grinder is all it is. And this is like a, an eight inch uh, grinding disc. Uh, these are 50 grit, 50 grit is they cut fast. They don't wear down quite as fast as some of the other stuff. Um, so basically what we got to do is you're going to go along and you're going to grind with this flat right along the edge of where it's crimped because what's going to happen is as it's as it's crimped it's bent over like your door shell is like this your door panel is crimped over your door shell like that so what you're going to do is you're going to grind down that back half right there until you grind all the way through that crimped edge and separate the two pieces now with these truck doors like this they are not only crimped but they are glued as well uh you'll see how we deal with that uh here in just a minute as well so uh, now i'm going to show you i'll move it down where it's a little bit closer up so you can see the edge as i'm grinding so you can actually see it go from looking like one piece down to three pieces which is going to be your door skin then your door shell in the middle and then the flange where it's crimped over um on the other side so i'll get down i'll zoom in and we'll show you how we grind this thing off to uh to cut it down also always make sure you put your glasses and your ear protection on it ain't cool to get stuff hung in your eyes. All right, so now you can see right here where it started where it started to, to separate right here. So you got this piece. This is the piece that's hemmed over that's kind of crimped to the inside. Then you see right here you got a little gap between them. That's going to be the gap you see right here. That's your actual door shell. And then this piece on top, that's your actual door skin. So what you do is you're going to go all the way around the outside of your door here, and you're going to cut it down until you see that split. So uh, let's go around, let's get this dude cut off. All right, now on some vehicles, especially these uh, Ford trucks and uh, even some older models, but uh, different different uh, brands, but especially these Fords. So I know GM does it too. You've got the inside of the, the window frame right here is actually a crimped part of the panel as well. And all the way across right here, where your belt molding is gonna go too. Now you're gonna have some guys that are gonna wanna cut a door skin right here right here and weld it together because they're too lazy or not a good enough body man to actually crimp this without destroying it or they're just lazy and just don't want to do it the correct way i know there were some vehicles that ford made years and years ago where uh with the skin it would come with a piece of paperwork that on a particular skin it might give you the option to cut this right here but uh those are very few and far between but a lot of guys still like to cut them like i said and that is not the proper way to do the job. If uh, they intended you to put half a door skin on, they would have sent you half a door skin. So 
now as far as uh, this area like this, you're just going to cut it off and go around it the same way that you go around the outside of the door skin. I'm going to use this same grinder. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to cut that all off. And then we'll be ready to finish removing this panel. So let's get to grinding. <sighs> all right, so you see we got it all cut off. So now, like I told you, this thing is glued all the way around everywhere. You'll see when you cut it, and one thing I didn't say, but should go without saying, but I've seen people do it anyway. Pay attention to where your sparks go, y'all. If you shoot sparks on glass, you will ruin glass. Uh, wind windows, windshields, all of that. Uh, and another thing, too, these little pieces that, uh, you know, like the part of the hem, like some people call it, the flange. Be careful. Just grab a hold of them go to rip them off because if they grab up just a little bit and you slide your hand on it, they will cut you faster than a razor blade. They are super duper 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 sharp. Now, anyhow, so like I said, this thing is glued all the way around every bit of it. Everything that you got to take off is also glued on. So the way we're going to take that off, a lot of guys will, will uh, want to take an air hammer and and, and get after it. I, you, I absolutely hate an air hammer. I think it should be outlawed because I wouldn't be allowed in a body shop. They do nothing but destroy everything that they touch and if you try to either air hammer this or split it with like a, a seam buster you're going to bend your door shell all to pieces it will do it but you're going to do a lot more harm than good in the process but uh what we're going to do we're going to take a map gas torch and we're going to go ahead and run around this thing and you'll see it it'll pop and it'll uh it'll that glue will release once it gets hot and it'll pop right off here uh make it makes it really really easy to do so what i usually like to do is I just I always you heat up the paint side, obviously, because this is the side we're throwing away, so we don't care. I just heat it up till I see the paint start bubbling, and I just keep working my way. I know if it got hot enough to bubble that paint, that glue's going to release. So let's jump on this thing and uh, heat it up till the paint gives. <laughs> okay. And yes, I know when I was cutting the door skin off, I should be wearing a, a mask. I actually do have a mask. I'm, I'm a really big fan of uh, um, the RZ mask. I, I think they work really good. I, I, I keep those hanging right over there. Um, you'll probably be wearing one now, actually, because there's definitely going to be some fumes coming off of this, but uh, I'm not wearing one. That way I could kind of talk to you for a second about what I'm doing. We'll see how it, it heats up until that paint bubbles up. And then, you know, I know my heat's blowing across it like this, so I just keep Working across it like that doesn't take very long, and uh, all this stuff will just release and it'll come right off really easily with little to no effort thereafter. Just grab a pair of gloves and kind of pull on it a little bit, and these just pop right on. Off. Yep, there it went. As you relieve it more. That thing just come on off of there. Now you also got to remember, you see, I just heated around the top right here. Once I get down to right here, I'm going to come back around the inside right there. All right, so just like that, we've heated it. It's released all the way around, even though it may not look like it all the way around, it is. So now our next thing is we are going to grab these trusty gloves. Ooh, that fell over. We're gonna grab these trusty gloves. Now you gotta understand, there is something called urethane seam sealer that is on there are beams that run across the insides of, of a door. They're called intrusion beams. It's what keeps, when uh, when somebody hits your door, it's what keeps it from just caving all the way in. Um, they're just support beams that go in there. Now, each one of these support beams goes across, and they're a quarter of an inch, thereabouts, from the, out, the actual outside part of the door skin. Those uh, intrusion beams have what's called a urethane seam sealer on them. Uh, they just kind of put little blobs of it on there. All across, you'll see it here in just a minute. So throughout the process of heating it and when you go to pull on it, sometimes some of that stuff will kind of kind of let go on its own. You can kind of pull it up. You see 
how it's kind of hanging right here. That's what that is. It's that seam seal. So you can kind of pull it and just kind of work it slow like this. Um, some foreign cars or even some Ford Escapes and things like that. The intrusion beams are so weak, you can bend them. So you kind of have to be careful how hard you push at them. Um, so you just take and just kind of work it like this. Like I said, sometimes uh, the seam seal will release. Sometimes you might have to put a little heat to it. Yeah. So this one is right across here. So if I can get, once you ever get it to kind of release, you can usually pull the door right on up off of it. Not, not a real big deal. Yeah, you see now it's trying to come on up. But if it is, if you get one that's stubborn and doesn't want to let go, you can put a little heat to it right on the, right on the surface and uh, it'll let go. The thing will pop right off. You see there it goes. It's all released. Now our door skin is pretty much free. Here. Now these gloves are Kevlar, so this ain't going to cut me, and the heat's not really bothering me. So that's why I'll just grab hold of this and pull on it. It doesn't really matter to me. It's not. It's not going to. Not going to bother me. All right. So let's set this to the side. So there we go. Door skin removed. So you see, this is our upper intrusion beam, also where uh, you know where our belt molding would attach right there. This is our center, our lower. These guys are obviously built much, much. This one is built the sturdiest of the three. Um, and it's weird because this thing is removable. You can unbolt it and take it off, but you can't buy it separate. I don't really know why that is, but I mean, whatever. I guess it's just one of the things you're not supposed to fix. Um, see, there again, do not grab this and pull this if you're not wearing some kind of gloves because you might lose a finger. I don't know. I think it would probably cut you severely, severely bad. So now what you see here, is this glue residue it's all over all over the outside so now you've also got on the other side you have got all your little excess pieces from where it was hemmed over so you, if, you, if they're loose and they're hanging you can grab them and pull them off it's not a big deal if you want to go and pull them off now you can or we're gonna have to flip the door and do a little cleanup on it anyway um, it's really up to you I kind of like to if I can just go ahead and grab them rip them off I'll go ahead and pull them off I guess it's what my kids would call satisfying. So pull that down like that. They come off pretty easily. There again, please make sure you wear gloves. You will cut the crap out of yourself if you don't. There we go. So there we go. Those are all off all the way around. Easy peasy. So now we get good to do our cleanup and our prep for our new door skin. So pretty much all of the seam sealer, the seam sealer will come off. You have some little pods left. As long as that stuff is still attached real good, I don't go messing with it because uh, it's, it's, if it's attached good, I don't need to. I can put my, my urethane seam sealer right on top of it and it'll stick into that stuff, no problem. Now, this old glue, we gotta get this stuff off. It all has to come off. That way we get a nice clean mating surface for our new door skin to, to go to. Same over there where our SPRs are gonna go. Um, so we've got uh, Ford, when uh, you repair anything of theirs, um, like when you get a door skin or a quarter panel, things like that, uh, they give you your, um, your operating procedures that you have to go by to reinstall all the parts. And it tells you everywhere you're supposed to put uh, glue and seam sealer and things like that, where your, um, your SPRs are supposed to go back. So you basically, you're going you're gonna to need to put the SPRs that they recommend in, um, in the paperwork that they send you. You're going to need to put those SPRs back here. They're going to tell you how many to put in. So we're going to, obviously we're going to follow all of that literature and make sure we put it back the way that it's supposed to, the way that Ford recommends. So now for cleaning this off, um, we're going to use a, what's called a roll lock wheel, which is this guy right here, which is essentially just a, an angle grinder with a little, you can get them sometimes a green. The ones we use here are purple. It's a 3M um, Cubitron, I do believe. Um, 50 gritter, 50, 80 grit. You don't need to use anything, uh, anything more coarse than that. The glue is not rated to, it's not recommended to be used against any, against scratches that are more coarse than that. So essentially you're just going to go over and just grind this down and, uh, you don't go crazy with it. Just, just get it clean. Just knock off all the old glue. And uh, like I said, I don't, I don't worry too much about this whole stuff right here. So uh, I'm going to go around and knock off all this old glue right quick. And then uh, we can come right on back when we are ready to flip this thing over. And I'll show you what I'm going to do to the other side of it. <clears throat> all right. So now you can get a good look. See at what we look like all cleaned up. 
I don't grind off any more than you really need to. Just kind of get that edge all taken care of nice. Get all that old glue residue off of there. So your new door skin can lay down on there nice and flush. So you can, your new glue has something good to stick to. And when you hem that dude over, it'll all finish nice. Now, the inside of the door is pretty much prepped and ready to go at this point. So now we got to flip her over and address our old seam sealer. So uh, let's get that deal done. I'll get her flipped over and show you what we're talking about. Alrighty, so got her all flipped off. Now, you can see right here on the door, like there was no seam sealer here. You could just see a little bit of paint edge where they had hemmed the door skin over and came down. Now, you see here, we got seam sealer all the way down through this area. It's kind of like that. Just kind of, they kind of seam sealed random spots on the door and then didn't seam seal others. Now, personally, I've never really understood this entire thing because when you glue it, the glue actually squishes out on the inside and on the outside right here. You'll have to clean a little bit of it up. So the glue is actually sealing it anyway. So I personally feel like seam sealer is there more for looks than anything. Because, you know, if you put your glue on correctly, the glue is going to seal it up anyhow. But what I like to do is generally, uh, I mean, there's a lot of ways. I've seen guys use grinders. I've seen guys sand it and everything else. Uh, the most least aggressive way that I've found to do it is I like to take uh, just a razor knife and I come right in here and I cut uh, the seam sealer off just right flush with the door and uh, I just cut the bead, of, the bead of silicone off of it nice and clean and uh, get it scuffed down to the to the, the bare metal there that way after I hem it over the glue can can attach to it real nice and uh, then I can come back and when I re-seam seal it uh, I can just kind of cover up uh, any of the paint edge that might be visible there with the new seam sealer. And then when, then when we paint it, it'll look really nice on the flip side. So I'm going to get my razor knife right quick, and uh, I'll show you, show you how I go about cutting this stuff off here. So let me go grab my knife. All right, so nothing special here, just your basic, you know, utility knife. Put a good fresh blade in there, and just kind of come right along this edge under here. Now, I will go ahead and say, when doing this, if you have Kevlar gloves, not a bad idea to wear them because if you slip and you slide your finger down that edge right there, it will cut all of these fingers plumb down to the white meat before you even know it. Um, my fingers are fairly callous, and, but they still, it cuts me pretty good and I do tend to slip from time to time. So uh, wearing the gloves is not a terrible idea if you have them. If not, and you're just not scared, go ahead and get cut. <laughs> I mean, if you think you're that tough, you just go right ahead. But you can see how that, you can cut it right down pretty pretty well flat. And I can come back like this. I can kind of scratch off that little bit that's left over there. No problem. Cleans up real nice. So you can come back over it. Let's knock all that old seam sealer off. Just like this. There we go. So... Um, we'll go around the whole door like this, any of the areas where it does have a uh, seam sealer on it, and I'll run around and get her all cleaned off and ready to go. And uh, we'll come back over here, and we'll, we'll uh, cause then at this point, our shell will be prepped and ready to go. So we'll go over here, and we'll take a look at our skin and talk about what we need to do to it, it, get it ready to go. All right, so... We're halfway there. We got our door skin off. We got our door shell prepped and ready to go. Now we're ready to get over here, go check out our new door skin and get ready to put this thing on. That's going to be in part two. So now it's time for you to go out there and put all this that I just told you to work on your own door skin. Come back for part two so you see how we install this thing and wrap this job up. So see you in the next one.